All right, this video is about allergies. So there's quite a big dot point that we talk about when we talk about allergies, and that's this one. So what we need to do is we need to talk about the deficiencies and malfunctions of the immune system. But what we're really looking for are the three different types. Okay, so we're gonna talk about autoimmune diseases and you need to know the example of multiple sclerosis. We're gonna talk about immune deficiency diseases and you need to know HIV. And the last one we're gonna talk about, and that's actually the first one we're gonna talk about, are the allergic reactions illustrated by reactions to pollen. So let's get started. Any kind of immune system disease is when the immune system doesn't do what it should normally. So it doesn't react to pathogens the way that it normally should. It reacts to antigens that are normally harmless or it reacts to self antigens that are normally tolerated. So there are three different categories. Um, the first one is going to be your, hang on, let me use a bit of color than that. The first one is your immuno, immunodeficiency disease. The second one is your hypersensitivity, which is what we're talking about now. And the last one is your autoimmune. And as a result, you could either have a mild illness, you could have a moderate illness, or you could have a severe illness. So let's start talking about hypersensitivity reactions. So people with allergies, ah, oh, spring, isn't it wonderful? If you've got hay fever though, oh, you feel it. Um, I'm quite lucky I don't get hay fever, but I appreciate how bad it is for those of you that do. So hypersensitivity reaction is this overreaction to an antigen that causes, that normally poses no threat. So those antigens that pose no threat, we call them, Sorry, I didn't realize it was written there already. Now we call them an allergen. So you know how right back at the beginning of the immune system bit, we talked about allergens and I said, we'll come back to it. Now we're coming back to them. So you need to know this named example of how people have allergic reactions to pollen. What that means is hay fever. So allergic reactions are a type of hypersensitivity. So pollen, fur, house dust, uh, other people get it to different foodstuffs or drugs, medicines. So depending on the individual, you can get a mild reaction, you can get a life-threatening reaction such as anaphylaxis. And we know plenty about anaphylaxis because we know, I'm sure we all know someone that's got an EpiPen. Uh, so we've got a little question there asking you to give it a go. So an allergic reaction to pollen is also called a cytotoxic hypersensitivity, we've never said that, uh, anaphylaxis, allergic rhinitis, or hay fever. So have a think. We've already got hay fever here, so D is definitely correct, but there is one other answer. So the other thing that you could call it is allergic rhinitis. So allergic rhinitis, it sounds very fancy, but it's not really. Rhinos, rhinitis, I just meaning sim like sim syndrome or a problem, but rhino means nose, yeah? Because rhinoceroses have a big nose. So the virus that causes the common cold is called the rhinovirus because it has to do with your nose. Um, allergic rhinitis is therefore the allergic reaction that causes an inflammation in your nose. What? That's what you can say next time you want to be fancy about your hay fever. You can go, oh, I don't have, well, I do have hay fever, but I just have allergic rhinitis. Okay, what happens during an allergic reaction? We are now on uh, page number 11. I'm going to get you to order those in a minute, but let's just talk through it. So the first time you get exposed to an allergen, your B cells produce and secrete antibodies specific to that antigen. Okay, so it's an allergen is a non-dangerous antigen, but you are getting plasma cells making antibodies. Now, the biggest thing with this is the antibodies are now gonna bind themselves. So you've got a antibody production up here. Yeah, uh, then you've got your mast cell here. 
and the antibodies attach themselves to the outside of the mast cell. Now your mast cells are sensitized. So this is why the first time you get exposed, you might get a mild reaction, but you don't generally get a really bad one. Problem is your second exposure to an allergen. Now on the second exposure to an allergen is you've got the mast cell that's got these antibodies. The allergen comes in, allergen over here, comes in and binds to these. When it binds to these, what do you get? You get a release of histamine. If you get a release of histamine, what's histamine gonna do? It's going to swell all your, it's gonna dilate your blood vessels, it's gonna increase the permeability. Lots of more white blood cells, lots of more fluid comes right into, especially the site where it's happening, which is usually with, high, with pollen, your nose yeah, and your sinuses. So histamine can also cause contraction of the smooth muscle within your lungs. So if you're someone that has a really bad reaction and the histamine contracts the smooth muscle in your lungs, that means that they swell up and all of a sudden you can't breathe properly. And that's why anaphylaxis is so deadly. So here we have our series of statements. I'd like you to pause, try and number them based on that explanation we just went through. And then I'm gonna go through the answers. So make sure you've paused and given it a go as here are the answers. There we go. So the first thing that happens is you get initial exposure to the allergens will make antibodies. Now, this is when I said we might talk about those IgE. So IgE is not compulsory to know about, but it is nice to know that they are called IgE antibodies. The next thing is the constant region of that IgE binds to the mast cell, like so. Um, the third thing that happens is the next time you get exposed, you get the antigen binding to the IgE antibodies. Now we get this guy releasing a bunch of histamine. After that, you get blood vessels dilate and redness and swelling. Here's another picture showing you what it looks like. I'm pretty sure this is on the same page. Uh, you've got here, you can label it. You can see here are your pollen antigens. They activate a B plasma cell to produce antibodies. If you want to, you can call them IgE antibodies. IgE antibodies, antibodies bind to the mast cells. So this is first exposure. This one here is the second exposure. And we get, here's the pollen again. Now it's gonna to bind to these and you can see here, bind to the mast. This here is the mast cell with the IgE on it. We're gonna release histamine. Histamine. And that histamine is going to cause swelling and redness. Why? Because of that dilation of the blood vessels. Okay, so why does your first exposure not... Oh, goodness. Yep, here's another one here. You've got more detail in this one if you want to pause and go through and add some extra stuff. So why is the first exposure to an allergen less severe than subsequent exposures? Have a pause, have a think. Hopefully, we've had a think. The first exposure, we get the production of the IgE antibodies, but they're not bound to the mast cells, so we don't get a release of histamine. Second exposure, now the IgE antibodies are bound to the mast cells, which means that the moment the antigen comes in, they activate those mast cells and they release histamine, so you get that much bigger reaction the second time. Here's some true false statements. I'm gonna go through each one and you're gonna try and correct them if we can. So the first one, IgE is produced by mast cells and travels in the bloodstream. Pause, give it a go. 
IgE is produced by a B plasma cell, yeah? Uh, IgE can bind by its constant or variable regions. No, because these guys, it's not gonna bind by the variable, but it does bind by the constant regions. Allergic reactions are mediated by the antibody called IgE. Ready? Yay! And the last one, when an allergen binds to an IgE, IgE antibodies on mast cells, it triggers a signal transduction cascade, which causes the release of histamine. So there's a lot of extra detail in here, but let's see if you get it right. Ready? Yay! Okay. There's a little video here. If we get time in class, we'll watch it. Otherwise, I'll just link it in the YouTube uh, playlist. But here we go. Let's talk about the side effects of histamine. So the first one is completed for you. So we've got a lot of blood vessel dilation. As a result of that blood vessel dilation, you get a decrease in blood pressure. So you might feel a little bit woozy because you've got the blood starts to decrease in blood pressure and you might go, oh goodness, I don't feel too good, which means not as much blood can pass around the body at any given time. The next thing it does is it likes to increase the permeability of your blood vessels, allowing your immune cells and fluids into the area. Great for attacking what it thinks is bad, even though it's just pollen and it's not really a, a non-self antigen to be worried about. The next one is we get a contraction of the smooth muscles in the airways, so we find it difficult to breathe. And the last one is we get an activation of actually the fluid secreting cells, which means that we get those teary eyes, those runny nose, that sneezing. And the sneezing isn't there just for the fate, like for the sake of it, it's there to try and expel the foreign antigens. You sneeze, oh shoo! <laughs> trying to get rid of the pollen that's in your system. Our bodies are so smart. Uh, here's just another little picture showing you that. The last little bit on allergies is the fact that we can take things to stop these from happening or to stop them from being so severe. So the first thing we take is an antihistamine. So you might have taken Zyrtec, Claritine, something like that. So what an antihistamine does is it actually, here's where you would get your allergic reactions. Normally histamine binds to a receptor and causes that blood, all of those things that we talked about here. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to block that receptor. So an antihistamine kind of operates like what? It operates very similar to a competitive inhibitor. So what it does is it binds to some of the sites that histamine will bind to, and therefore it stops the histamine from binding and the reaction isn't as severe. This is why they tell you to take the antihistamine early, so when you get up in the morning. Because if you try and take it after you've released the histamine and been exposed to the pollen, it might not be able to bind. If you take it beforehand, it can have time to bind to the receptors, and it does eventually break down and go away, but it has time to bind to those receptors, so therefore your body has a less severe reaction. The last thing I want you to do is to go to page 15 in your notes and try and fill in this little summary document and then we'll talk about that right at the end.